planning? What is it? And why is it something that you should know more about? To help us find out, I'd like to welcome Anna, Andrew and Adrian. So welcome everybody. It's great to see you all. Let's start with this. Why is it worthwhile talking to a professional audience? Because don't those people already have quite a good idea about wealth planning and what it involves? Well, yes, it's a fairly safe assumption. Um, but you know what they say about assumptions. <laughs> and I think it's worth sort of highlighting that, that there's only a very small percentage of the population that work in financial services. Mm. Um, and everyone outside of that fairly small percentage, it's not their area. They're not experienced in it. And I think there's a lot of phrases within financial services that can seem quite similar, can come mm. across quite similarly, like um, uh, investment uh, planning or wealth planning. Mm. And I think that's what creates a lot of confusion. OK, so those people, they might have a really good idea, broadly speaking, but they're not the experts. Correct. That, okay. yes. would, would you agree? Mm. Yeah, I think the other thing as well is that if you talk to different firms that offer wealth planning, those different firms very often will offer wealth planning in different ways. Okay. And so unless you actually speak to each individual firm, it's very often, often difficult to mm. know what the actual offer is. Yeah, fair enough. And I suppose as a seasoned professional, it could feel a little bit odd to ask the question, what exactly is wealth planning then? Maybe people sort of don't almost want to say that out loud. Yeah, mainly because it covers such a huge range of things. Mm. And because, uh, as Adrian touched on, the way a particular wealth planner or way a firm approaches it will be very different and therefore the plan will be very different. Right. So there's almost a challenge for the client. It's like, well, who do I trust? Where do I go? Why would I go with them versus somebody else if it's all so different? So is it also slightly about finding a firm that you feel aligned to or you like their values? Um, OK, so Anna, let's go to you now. Do you find that this is a particular issue for younger professionals? Yes. I mean, we know that the next generation private client professionals can sometimes feel as though they're less experienced, less knowledgeable compared to their more experienced colleagues. Mm. We actually saw this firsthand in an event we ran recently, which was a masterclass for how to read a wine list. Okay. And the thought behind this was to help build confidence when maybe taking clients out at the first time you've ever had to choose a wine for a table you might be expected to. And actually, from speaking to people after this event, we found that it can actually be quite a daunting experience to take the challenge on if you're not very versed with, with doing so. So following this event, we actually decided to establish our Nedbank Private Wealth Next Generation Network. I think that's real. I was actually talking about the wine thing with a friend the other day. And it is, everybody has a sort of theory of how to do it, but based perhaps on not very much. It's very, very <laughs> interesting. So it sounds like a really, really good initiative, helping young people who are at the start of their careers to sort of do that networking. And that's good for clients as well, of course. But moving over to you, Adrian, as a wealth planner, why should people have a wealth plan? It almost starts the process as a family of having that discussion about what are your goals and objectives? What do you want your life to look like um, over whatever time frame it might be? What do you want to do? What do you want to achieve? And I think that wealth plan then helps you almost define your, your purpose yeah. in life and the effect that your finances have in a, helping you to achieve whatever those objectives are. So. Say I'm a tax advisor with a high net worth client, what do I do? Well, probably the first point of contact would be myself. Okay. Um, and I would look at, I'd speak to the, the advisor, I'd speak to them about the client or with the client to establish who would be the best private banker that would be their, their sort of main relationship, um, hand that over. And then the way we work generally is we have specialists like the wealth planning team, the credit team, and, and that it would be up to the banker to bring in those specialists at the right time. And what does the process of creating a wealth plan involve? Because it does sound quite, quite complex. It, it's certainly not a quick process. <laughs> it's not just a pad um, and a pen and a little list. <laughs> well, sometimes for me it is. But, um, I think um, really we, time is, is the important factor um, and we take a lot of time in understanding what a client's circumstances are. Um, not just in terms of what they own and what they owe and what's their income and what's their expenditure, but more in terms of what's important to them, what are their values in life, 
what do they want to achieve. Consequently, it's not not a quick thing to to agree upon. So this is getting into people's core values. This is getting into yeah. the different ways people want to lead their lives and the kind of sort of retirement they might want to have. Absolutely. And I think, you know, for me to be able to put a plan together, yeah. I need to be able to understand a client's values yeah. um, so that I can almost put myself in the client's shoes and understand yeah. how they might feel in certain situations or how they might react in certain circumstances. Yeah. Interesting. Um, so it's really personalised and bespoke, and I I think probably very interesting. Some people want to work till they till they drop, don't they? This is like it's what drives them. They can't imagine yeah. not working. Absolutely, and that there is no right or wrong answer. It's mm. really establishing what's important to the individual. Yeah. Um, but I think then taking it forward, because as you say, a plan could last for twenty, thirty, or or even forty years. Um, there's an awful lot of calculations that have to go into the plan in the background. And, and that's where we use financial forecasting or cash flow Mind modeling. reading. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> absolutely, sometimes. Um, and, and I think Anne is probably gonna talk a little bit more about cash flow yes. um, and how it works. But it really gives us that first opportunity um, for clients to see in a lot of circumstances what their financial future might actually look like. Mm. So, Anna, you have been called queen of the cash flow plan. Quite <laughs> frankly, you need a crown. Uh, so we had a great explanation of cash flow planning from you earlier on in the year when we did a client facing virtual event. And in fact, we're going to put a link to it um, on here for you. So if you'd like to check it out, you can. But can you give our viewers a quick overview? Yes, of course. That's quite a title to start with. <laughs> cash flow. So cash flow planning software is a great tool to enable us to portray a client's financial future. Now, this will start with inputting the client's assets, liabilities, their expenditure and their income. But also we can then input the goals and objectives that Adrian spoke about briefly and the timelines that we can then put okay. in to help the client achieve their goals. Um, and from then, the really exciting part, I think, is... Um, running some insights such as what actual what return do clients actually need on their investments okay. and how much could they spend in retirement which is really insightful their capacity for loss and actually their ability to take risk with their investments okay so it's almost sort of bringing things to life so that a client can really visualize what that might look like or feel like yeah exactly okay and how how accurate can you be so it's our sort of best assumption of a client's financial future mm. and obviously we know that the future is not certain investment returns inflation interest rates are non-linear year on year so as long as the client understands that these are our best assumptions no one knows what the future is going to hold um, but one of the ways that we can portray a non-linear future for a client is by running stress test simulations such as market crashes and we can then look at how this will affect the plan in the short, medium and long term. OK, right. very interesting. Well, look, thank you so much. I feel like I learned a lot in a short space of time. And we'll have links to the videos that we mentioned, the NedGen LinkedIn group and details of how to contact Andrew all in the platform. Mm -hmm.